Hello, uh, welcome to this presentation about enterprise risk planning or how to ensure shop floor resiliency. My name is Guillaume Vendroux. I'm the CEO of Delmia, the brand within Dassault System that focuses on operation and today focusing on uh, manufacturing operation in particular. It is our daily life as industrial to have to manage problems on shop floors. But lately, uh, uh, we had uh, more than our share of disruptions and problems. Uh, supply chain disruptions, demand changing, absenteeism, you name it, we have them all. And so we've been to you know, significant tough times in, uh, in, in the last few months. And so we thought it would be interesting today to see how we at Dassault System can help you manage those disruptions, those problems, and ensure shop floor resiliency throughout your operations. Um, we have the strong conviction that the 3D Experience platform is a good way and the best way to indeed um, ensure uh, the robustness and sustainability of your manufacturing. To be sustainable and resilient in shop floors, you actually need three things. The first thing is you need a robust plan. And to build a plan, uh, you need a model. You need to be able to uh, uh, look at your model, change your model, tweak it, simulate it, validate it, in order to make sure that, that, uh, that uh, performance will be there on shop floors. Models in our language is now called manufacturing operation twins or manufacturing twins. And it is through that model, through that twin, that you will be able to make sure that what you have devised will indeed happen. Model, this is the first thing. Second thing is, if you want to be robust, you need to be able to predict and to anticipate in the future. We are at Dassault System as scientific companies, and when scientists want to anticipate, what do they do? They actually use a model that they feed with real data. So let's take our uh, virtual manufacturing twin, feed it with data, and then uh, by running the model, you will have a glimpse of what will happen in the future. This is the way you, be you can become predictive. This is the way you can become anticipative. And we all know that when we anticipate and predict in shop floors, we already have solved the problem. So, First, we need the virtual twin of the manufacturing. Second, we need to feed it with real data in order to be predictive. And third, based on the first two and the, and, and, and the conclusion that you can draw from the modeling, you need to be able to act. And to act, you need to be able to mobilize the uh, collective intelligence of your teams, have them co collaborate structurally, unstructurally, to get the best out and, and, and the visibility on, on what needs to be done. Well, uh, guess what? There is only one place in, 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 in the industrial ecosystem where you can find at the same place the model, the data, and the ability to collaborate. This is the 3D Experience Platform. And this is the reason why we are deeply convinced that the 3D Experience Platform is the best way to make your operation more robust. And here, obviously, our manufacturing operation more robust. So we'll spend a few minutes together and I will try to illustrate uh, the value that the, the, the 3D experience can provide. And as a good industrial guy, I'm not going to make too many slides. I'm going to take you to shop floors. We're going to tour the world together and visit shop floor after shop floor to demonstrate the value the 3D experience can provide. Uh, considering the current context, uh, it's going to be a little difficult to actually go to all the shop floor, I promise. So let's do the next best thing. Let's connect to the 3D experience platform. Let's tour the world and let's visit virtually uh, those factories. Here you are in, a, in France in a com cosmetic factory. You are looking at the cloud points of that factory, which we scanned. And obviously through that scan, you can visit the factory and pick the places you want to look. All, all those dots here are points of interest that, that you may want to, to have a look at. So if we pick one, we go at a station and you see that we can enrich uh, the, uh, the, the scans with symbols and with semantic. And for example, at that station, you have access to uh, the work instruction of that station. And, and uh, you can also post videos to see how the action is being taken or done at, at a given station. Obviously, uh, it's not just only to look at it, but uh, it's also to, to identify the risk that we have on shop floors. And you see the little triangle. So let's pick one. I think we're going to go to a LTT 4, 3 or 4, which is a packaging, uh, a packaging um, station. And from the scan of, of points, here is a station. From the scan of points, here you, look, you see that we were able to build a 3D model or to get automatically a 3D model on which we can model the ergonomics at that position. And you see here that globally the position is Gurf 
4.5 exposure to the uh, musculoskeletal index, but nevertheless, a small problem with uh, women, women in the first fifth percent, uh, percentile. So, uh, obviously, using the system solutions and, and, and a smart posturing engine that allows us to evaluate objectively the risk, we can um, replay, I would say, the work to be done at the station I identified posture by posture uh, where and how um, we expose our workers to, uh, to difficult conditions. So here, uh, a clear example where a simple uh, virtual twin of manufacturing obtained through a scan of points can allow you to mitigate one more risk in your shop floor, the ergonomic risk. Another shop uh, for another risk. Let, let's, let's again uh, tour the world. Here we go, close to Paris. Um, this is, um, this is uh, a, a, a different type of, of, uh, of risk management that we're going to do. The one uh, related to uh, new lines or new configurations of lines. So here again, we are visiting uh, the shop floor, way more automated than the one we had before. Uh, and the idea here is to check whether we can re-implement a line, that, an existing line at the same location. So you see how easy it is to actually um, clean the space while keeping, you know, the, the building structure, re-implement the, the line that was in memory and, uh, you know, adjust the setup so that you give uh, the line the places and the environment which is necessary for, for it to, uh, to, be, um, to be efficient. So, uh, very quick, very fast, very efficient, in particular in old buildings where you don't have the map, use the scanner points to actually prepare for the implementation of existing lines. Sometimes you have existing lines, and this is the case here, um, a little further down the road in this same shop, uh, this is another problem that we have to solve. We actually want to make a new line. So, similar start, based on the model, we clean up the model, and we are actually modeling very roughly the lines to make sure that the basic principle of layout will be uh, observed, that the flow will be good, that we have the space, that the people can, can move around and, and not too much because we want to be efficient. And then again, we can uh, simulate the functioning of the line in the context of the workshop, and, uh, and, and obviously this can go up to the virtual commissioning of, of this line. Yet another example where a virtual twin of manufacturing again obtained from, from, the, uh, from, the, uh, from the, uh, the, the, the scan, but enriched with, uh, with modeling of lines can help you mitigate new product introduction or change in the configuration in which you want to produce. So, so far we've been addressing uh, standard manufacturing risk, but obviously the, the extent of the simulation we can do on the virtual twin can go beyond just that of, of pure manufacturing. In the case of this factory, the question was totally different. In the context of the sanitary crisis, we wanted, or our client wanted to see, you know, how, uh, how the flow of air was so that we can control a possible, uh, con possible contamination. So, um, so here is a full simulation we did, again, based on uh, the scan of, of the canteen of that factory to check how, uh, how uh, the, the air would flow and what would the risk to which we, we would expose uh, the personnel of that company. So uh, obviously manufacturing risk, but not only. As soon as you have a model, you can extend the simulation to any types of risk you know, that, that, that you may want to address. The richer uh, the virtual uh, model of your manufacturing will be, the more precise uh, you, you're going to become in, in during the simulation and validation. In this uh, next shop that we are visiting here, again through the cloud of points, we actually designed the line uh, fully virtually, you know, uh, in the 3D experience platform. And here uh, you have a typical uh, simulation that we can do, um, not only uh, cycle times as we've just seen, but also uh, optimization of the layout uh, in order to increase performance. Um, with all the checks that are necessary to make sure that we are providing a safe environment to, um, to, uh, to the workforce. Uh, obviously, we can go again through workflow simulations, check the cycle time. Uh, we can also check uh, the best position for all the tools and, and, and other, uh, and, and other uh, uh, station parts so that the efficiency of the operation can be guaranteed. Um, and, uh, and also to make sure that uh, we don't expose our, our worker to, um, to an ergonomic problem. Uh, finally, and in the context, we can even extend the scope of, of simulation we can do to social distancing to make sure, again, that we are providing a safe environment for, for our workforce. We've seen the extent of what we can do when the line is virtual. 
Okay, now let's, let's, uh, let's go to the US and to see the extent and the scope of which we can cover when the full shop is actually uh, totally modeled. Um, this is a truck shop, as you can see, and you can model uh, uh, all instances of life within that shop. And in particular, what you can do is check that uh, your manufacturing operation management system, your exploitation system in the factory is actually um, you know, uh, well adapted, well synchronized with the operation you have to perform. So at that station, you have access to all the work instructions in the context of the position to make sure that the worker has the mechanics, has all the good information to actually execute what he has to execute. Um, this is obviously... Uh, uh, very interesting already for manual work, but you can go one step further. You can actually uh, simulate failure of automated lines and check uh, the way uh, and, and the mitigation action that you have to take on shop floors to put the, 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 the machines back online. Again, here you see, uh, you see a mom screen on the, at, the, at, the, at the bottom where we see the problem and we can, we can teach the, the, uh, the supervisor how to mitigate the problem and how to put the light back to green, that is the, the machine back on track. Um, we can even go one step further and in the context of the shop, we can also show how to manage quality issues. Okay, so again, uh, we are walking the shop, we're gonna declare a quality issue, we're gonna use the same uh, approach, the same tool, the same, the same methodology as what we would use in shop floors to identify a problem, tag a problem, report the problem for further, uh, for, for further team down the road to solve it. We are not quite there yet in automatic problem solving and to indeed uh, tackle the problem that we see in shop floors, we still need uh, to, um, to uh, gather the team and tap on their collective intelligence. And again, here, uh, the 3D experience can help. So we've seen how the model um, can help uh, mitigate risk, risk upstream. We've seen how connecting data can help us manage shop floor real time. Now let's look at how we can collaborate on the 3D experience platform. Um, and here again, uh, the 3D experience platform has been uh, designed, devised to support all types of collaboration, structure and structure, and extended even to, uh, to lean manufacturing practices. H highly interactive, highly collaborative, highly innovative in order to be able to solve any types of problem that we may face. We have seen in the previous example how the 3D experience platform can help you mitigate a number of different types of risk. Quality, safety, productivity. But there is one more that we would like to address, uh, the one related to supply chain. As we all know that supply chain is about one of the most uh, disruptive activity or potentially disruptive activity in shop floors. So uh, here we took uh, an example, a, a little demonstration uh, of, a, of a supply chain, a global supply network with 60,000 supply lines. So 100 million possibilities in managing that network and managing the supply lines of all factories. And in that model, we demonstrate the ability we have to actually monitor in real time uh, this supply chain, monitor the state of stress of all the suppliers, the state of stress of all the, the supply lines, and continuously uh, optimize and propose decision to optimize uh, the, uh, the, the supply chain and the net and, and the supply within those supply chain uh, to uh, maximize the uh, KPIs that we see on the, uh, on the top left. So again, an ability from a modeling to be able to mitigate all risk. With this, I think we have you know, been around the world a couple of times in the last three minutes and uh, we've been able to, to see how indeed the 3D experience platform provides value in, in, uh, in, in putting together uh, the model, the data, and the ability to collaborate, the model to build a robust plan, the data to be able to be predictive, the collaborations to be able to act efficiently. This is the value that uh, the 3D experience can provide, and this is the way forward to have shop floor resiliency. Thank you very much for your attention.